The injury list is long for the Philadelphia 76ers coming out of the All-Star break and coming up on today's 76ers. Now, multiple injury updates on the Sixers front. But first, Hoops is back tonight. Ball is back. 76ers taking on the New York Knicks. I don't like the Knicks. This is a division rival and a close proximity rival. These two teams don't really have a long history as far as the playoffs go because the Knicks have been a bad organization for a really long time. But type this down in the comment section. Beat New York. Beat New York. Beat New York. Get with me on that. And with that, let's talk about these 76ers injuries right now. And I'm Chase Sr. This is 76ers now by Chat Sports. We have some injury updates on Joel Embiid, Tobias Harris, DeAnthony Melton, Nicholas Batum, as well as Robert Covington as Philadelphia starts the second half, back half of the schedule coming out of the NBA All-Star break. Let's start off on the Joel Embiid front. He got surgery a couple of weeks ago. In case you missed it the other day, we sat down with Dr. David Chow. We talked about that Joel Embiid procedure. And according to Ramona Shelburne, Joel Embiid at the Sixers practice facility on Tuesday earlier this week. That's, of course, really good news. Here's the report from Shelburne. There is an optimism in Philadelphia that Joel Embiid can return at some point during the regular season, at least close enough to the playoffs to get that rhythm heading into the playoffs. But the Sixers do not want to put any time frame on it until he starts ramping up, but I'm told he went to... Practice on Tuesday, got there early to see how everything was in the morning. His enthusiasm is there. And that's a really underrated thing for Joel Embiid. I love his personality when everything is moving in a good direction, when he's feeling good. And then you play bad body language doctor when things are a little bit arduous and not going well, when he's dealing with adversity. So you have him coming back to practice. Him showing off that personality, positive spirits, and then Nick Nurse sat down with John Clark, NBC Sports Philadelphia, and said, it's our hope that we're going to have Joel Embiid back for the playoff run. Any positive news about Joel, it's always great to hear. And here's what the aforementioned Nick Nurse had to say about the process. Joel's been really positive. He's happy. He likes some of the new additions. He thinks that the team is getting better. He really wants to be out there. I hope to get to a couple of weeks with Joel before the NBA playoffs get underway. I don't know what to expect. We're a couple of weeks in. Probably a couple more to go before we get an eval, short for evaluation, of where we're going to be. I hope that we can get a couple of weeks in and get him in some games and get him healthy. Now, you think about this Embiid injury. This is kind of an invasive surgery here, as we talked about with Dr. David Chow and the complexities to it. He had this similar surgery back a couple of years ago. So how soon could he really return? You look at the injury timeline here. February 6th, he undergoes the surgery. And four weeks out, he's going to be reevaluated. That'll come on March 6th. On April 8th, that's eight weeks out, where the Sixers are hopeful at some point soon he's going to be able to return. And April 8th is right on the cusp of the playoffs getting underway. That's the start of the NBA playoffs on April 20th, a date that a lot of people out there are really looking forward to for a multitude of reasons. It's very important that Embiid gets time, I think, to ramp up before the playoffs start because we've seen with Embiid, sometimes it can take him a little while to get acclimated, to get into shape. Sometimes, and it's been normal procedure for him, so to speak, to start season slow because he's rounding in to peak physical conditioning. And you want him in the playoffs to be in as good a shape as possible, right? Because he's going to be playing a lot of minutes, most likely. He's going to have a demand as far as the workload. But then the intensity of the playoff schedule always gets ratcheted up. And then he gets hit with these double teams that wears him down. And then the schedule of the NBA playoffs, you don't have a lot of days to rest up. It's basically one night off, then you're back in action. And that can wear a player like Joel Embiid down, who's not always in peak form. 
who is a big guy, who's dealt with a lot of injuries, which has kept him from really maximizing himself just being in the best shape possible. So it's very important that Embiid gets time to ramp up before the playoffs start. And at the very least, he needs to return to practice before the playoffs start. If he doesn't get that practice schedule in before the playoffs start, what are we expecting from him if he doesn't practice, practice at all, doesn't play in any games, and then the playoffs come around? Let's say you're in a first-round series with the New York Knicks. Can he give you more than 20 minutes per night? It's going to be a tall test and a tall ask for Joel Embiid to give you anything more than that coming off a severe injury when he has that injury history to his knee. Now, you take a look at the Eastern Conference standings, and that's why I threw out the New York Knicks, not just because that's the opponent tonight, and then over the next 10, Philadelphia taking on New York a couple of times here. But if the season were to end right now, it'd be a 4-5 matchup between the Knicks as well as the 76ers. And I think the Sixers in a decent spot here, but as we're about to talk about with producer Chip, the Sixers have to avoid a losing skid for the remainder of the year because if they do, it is realistic that they could fall into the NBA play-in tournament. That's just not where you want to be. Sixers next, next 10 matchups here. You have the Knicks tonight on Thursday coming out of the break. You have the Cavaliers on the back-to-back. -back. Then you have the Bucks on the road against the Celtics, home against the Hornets, on the road against the Mavericks, on the road against the Nets. Not a lot of travel there, obviously. And then Grizzlies, Pelicans, and then you play the Knicks again on March 10th, and hopefully at that point, we get a firmer grasp of what's going to happen with Embiid. But Chip, as I just teased, it's realistic that the Sixers could fall into the play-in tournament, and that's just what you want to avoid here. If possible, you fall in between that 3-5 type of seeding, and it just puts you on the road to success in the NBA playoffs. Yeah, it's a very real concern at this point in the season. The Sixers had the ninth hardest schedule the rest of the season, and you know, you saw the standings, you saw the teams right below them. The Pacers made a big trade, got Pascal Siakam. The Heat are always a dangerous team, traded for Rozier. And the Magic have the easiest schedule the rest of the year. You don't want to be in a scenario where you're in the play-in and you don't have Joel Embiid. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you have one game, you have to win, and you don't have Embiid. Right. It's a real concern. They got to play better ball without Embiid because they haven't been good without him this season. Yeah, and the thing is, too, for an organization that has been affected by pressure and has come up short and has been prone to choke jobs. You have to play that one game where you have to win, and then the pressure is magnified. You get off to a slow start at the Wells Fargo Center, we know what could happen where the fans start to get on the Sixers, and when we've seen that, they've kind of clenched up a little bit. Yeah. You, you need Evan Bede, and you can't be in the play-in. You don't want to be in that play-in. Even if you're the five seed, you play against the Knicks. Hopefully it beats back by then. Got to play better ball, though, without him. You've seen producer Chip on some of our watch parties. He's the man who really puts these shows together. I think he's been a terrific addition here at Chat Sports. Vouch for him for us to hire him back almost a year ago at this point. And he's been killing the game. You can give him a follow on X, at Jake Chipper. You've seen him on the YouTube shorts, the watch parties, as I mentioned. We're going to start to incorporate him a little bit more here on the show. Hard work paying off for the kid. So will Joel Embiid play again in the regular season? Why for yes and for no? Let us know what you think down in the comment section. Coming up next, more Sixers injury updates from the head man in Nick Nurse. Stay tuned for that because we want to inform you on that front. But first, we want to tell you about Factor Meals. Factor's delicious. Ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered straight to your door. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan plus, and veggie, and more. There's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and have a feel-good week of meals ready to go. Two-minute meals is what we're talking about here. Fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant-quality meals. And the best part about all of this is 50% off. 50% off using the code SIXERSCHAT50. You want some healthy meals that are great 
and delivered straight to your door, ready to eat after a couple of minutes in the microwave. That's what Factor provides. So pick your pre-made meals, prepped and cooked to perfection. Heat them up and enjoy them. Factormeals.com slash Sixers Chat 50, 50% 50 off right now. As for DeAnthony Melton, here's an injury update on this front. Last play January 12th before suffering a back injury, full participant in practice on Wednesday. So it seems as though the all-star break has really served him well. He's not going to play against the New York Knicks on Thursday, but obviously good news here that he was a full go in practice on Wednesday because if he was hurt and ailing, that just wouldn't be the case. Before the injury in 33 games played, we talked about this the other day, the 10 most important Sixers. D'Anthony Melton, why can't he be this team's Derek White? He has the elements to his game and the heady basketball IQ to be just that. 33 games before going out with that back injury. 11.8 points per game, four rebounds. 39% from the floor, not great, but 36% from three. You'll certainly take that for a player who has a two-way impact and ability to really lock down on the defensive end of the floor. I really like Melton's game. Expiring contract, he's obviously going to want to prove himself, but down the stretch, this is a playoff type of pit bull that you want on this team, especially after trading away Patrick Beverly. As for Nicholas Batum, calf injury caused him to miss the last, miss the last nine games before the All-Star break. He, too, full participant to practice on Wednesday, and Nick Nurse saying on Wednesday that Batum pretty likely to play. Versatile player who can stretch the floor, not afraid to kind of mix it up on that low block, gives you physicality and finesse. Another one of these players like DeAnthony Melton who can play really good defense and help you there, but then catapult you on the offensive end. We saw when him and Embiid were sharing the floor and Batum has had some injury issues. He's had some personal issues, obviously. So in the few instances in which we've seen Batum and Embiid play together, Batum is a really good front court fit next to Embiid. Six points per game, 45% from downtown, and a guy who has a lot of high leverage playoff experience. So Embiid positive, Melton positive, and then Nicholas Batum, some positive injury news there. Same cannot be said for Robert Covington. Injury update here, sidelined since December 30th with the knee injury, did not practice on Wednesday, and Faroko, a famous process sixer, under Sam Hickey, it seems like it just continues to get worse and worse and worse, and we continue to get some more negative updates here. He's going to miss about the next three weeks to continue his recovery coming off that knee injury. Hasn't really done much for Philadelphia. I think he's well past his prime, kind of a throw-in in that James Harden trade, and he's been injured a lot over the last several years. Four and a half points per game, three-plus rebounds, 44% from the floor, the value that he gives you is as a 3 and D player, but when he's only shooting shy of 34% from three-point range chip, the value there just isn't all that good. And we talked about this yesterday. Like, you think about the Sixers team right now, you don't think about them as having Robert Covington. We talked about our top 10 Sixers. We've talked about some of these Sixers lineups now that Kyle Lowry is back. Could Covington lose his rotation spot? I think that's a worthy conversation to have. Yeah, and you brought this up when we heard about the injury yesterday, and I thought it was very interesting. Like, even when he's been in the lineup, he hasn't been tremendous. And yeah. this injury, very weird. It seems like this happens almost every year with the Sixers where a guy goes out, there's not much news about it, and then he just is out longer and longer and longer. Now three weeks at least. It could be even longer. Who knows? With all these guys coming back now, Tobias Harris and Kyle Lowry we'll talk about in a second, you know, we see Batum coming back. We see Melton coming back. There's just not going to be a lot of room for a player like Covington, who, again, hasn't been quite as good as you probably would have hoped, to be in the rotation. Then you got younger guys like Ricky Council. You know, you're going to have to play one of campaign Kyle Lowry, especially come playoff time. I don't know how much more we see Robert Covington this year, even once he gets healthy. Yeah, a couple of names that you throw out there. I want to see more from Ricky Council. I think he's proven himself in a short stint, and... You're going to have to give minutes and decide between campaign as well as Kyle Lowry. They seem to be better options than a Robert Covington because the issue with him, he can defend, but he's always injured. And if the three-point numbers are down and he's defending yet chucking but not making shots, kind of just hurts your offense a little bit. Yeah, exactly. You said it. You know, come playoff time, could he be valuable with his defense? Yes. But if you can't hit shots, 
at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to play. And especially coming off an injury, who knows what shape he's going to be in, what kind of play he's going to put on the court. He just might not be able to find minutes again this season. Yeah, a couple more updates to get to here before we hop on out of here. Tobias Harris, Kyle Lowry practicing in full go on Wednesday as well. So that's some more good news on the injury front. Harris, as we know, going into the All-Star break. If you don't know, now you know. Shout out Biggie. Missed a couple of games before the break. Good for him to kind of get completely healthy and use this time away as he wasn't an all-star to kind of heal up a little bit. And an underrated storyline with this Kyle Lowry signing is just what he does for the culture on top of it being a cool story that he's from Philadelphia, went to Villanova, legendary high school player in Philadelphia. The leadership qualities that he brings I think are so underrated. This is a guy who's won a championship. He's been a part of the Miami Heat culture. The Philadelphia 76ers ideally would love to replicate that Heat culture. And the vibes seem to be great. You see Maxi Lowry chopping it up here. Maxi, as we always know, just rocking that smile from ear to ear. Lowry going to play on Thursday against the Knicks. And I want to see how many minutes he gets, how he looks. Maybe recharged a little bit. We see this a lot with veterans, right? Major League Baseball trade deadline, big splash. You see, him, you, you see a player who might be washed a little bit toward the tail end or across all sports, right? NBA, NFL included. You trade for a veteran player. They feel rejuvenated to a certain degree, knowing the opportunity at hand. Playing career might be dwindling, opportunity to win a championship. Then you have the storyline here with Lowry trying to bring that heat culture to Philadelphia, win a championship for his hometown squad, returning to Philadelphia. I love what he's been able to bring to the table so far in an early going. Watch the interview that he had the other day, just like what he had to say, and hopefully he's able to play good hoop for Philadelphia as well. Ball is back. You want the 76ers to beat the Knicks. If you didn't do it already, do it right now. If you want to do it again, beat New York down in the comments section.